Hello and welcome back. All right, so today is the fifth installation of our lecture series. Um, we're working on chapter five out of our book, and it's about early atomic structure and theory. So the idea today is that we're going to take a, a sort of step through history at how people have thought about the atom um, and its structure. So um, it started a long time ago, right? People have always been asking the question, what is the fundamental composition of matter? What is it, what is it made of? What, you know, if we keep dividing this further and further, what is the, the piece that we arrive at? And we've talked about this a little bit, but people have sort of given ideas on this for thousands of years. The first idea was um, Epidocles in about 440 BC. Now what he said is that all matter is comprised of four elements, wind, water, fire, and earth. And that might seem a little bit silly now, but back then he had no way of testing these ideas. Uh, he had the fundamental idea though that um, all matter is comprised of different combinations of these four elements. So the idea that um, basic things can combine to give more complex things was uh, deeply sort of ingrained in his thinking at the time. An alternative theory was given by Democritus in about 470, 370 BC is when he lived. And his idea was a little bit more in line with what we think of today. So what he said was that all forms of matter are made up of indivisible particles called atoms. He said that atoms are in constant motion, which as we know today they are, and that they combine with one another in various ways. So he kind of hit the nail on the head given his time. Unfortunately, Aristotle, who was a famous Greek philosopher, pretty well known, sided with uh, Epidocles and, and endorsed his theory. And so for about 2,000 years plus, people had this view of the, the elemental nature of the world. So not quite correct. But Dalton, about 2,000 years later, right, he lived in 1766 to 1844, he revived this concept of the atom. And his ideas were actually based on scientific fact and experimental evidence. So um, he added this whole um, scientific process that we talked about earlier into the equation. And here's what he came up with. So he, Dalton's atomic model is that elements, which you know, as we know are pure substances, are composed of minute indivisible particles called atoms. So not too much new there. But atoms of the same element are alike in mass and size. So a carbon atom is going to have the same mass and size as any other carbon atom. In addition, number three, atoms of different elements are going to have different masses and sizes. So whereas a carbon atom is similar in mass and size to every other carbon atom, an oxygen atom is going to have an inherently different mass and a different size. Fourthly, the chemi chemical compounds are formed by the union of two or more different elements. Okay, so when two or more different uh, atoms come together, they make a compound which has its own properties. And atoms combine to form compounds in simple numeric ratios. So that was his fifth point, basically saying that you're not going to see a compound that's 3.876 carbons and 5.137 hydrogens, right? They can they combine in simple whole number ways. So you don't see random mixtures of any number. And finally, atoms of two elements may combine in different ratios to form more than one compound. So um, it's not just that hydrogen and carbon, for instance, can combine